What is up guys welcome back this is the part 3 of the building simple scraper with golang where we are not using any golang library but we are using only go routines and channels to build the scraper and uh, in the part 1 of this video series we had uh, discussed uh, our approach on how we'll be approaching the whole code uh, right and then the part 2 of the series we had started writing our funk main now this is the part 3 of the series right so if you have not seen part 1 and part 2 i highly recommend you go check them out so that you get more context here the part 3 of the series which is this video now we'll write our crawl function so you must have noticed in the in the previous video which i explained to you that our go routines will call a function called crawl and we'll pass the url so this uh, the URL will be basically one of the URLs which will be the seed URLs. So the seed URLs are the URLs which the user will pass when we call this function. The user will pass a couple of URLs, right? So we'll range over them and uh, every single URL will, will be passed to the go crawl, uh, the crawl function which will be basically called using a go routine. So that's why there's a go here. So the URL will be passed and then we'll also pass two channels there. Uh, one channel is where we'll uh, get all the unique links on that particular URL, all the unique links, uh, right, we'll get in our uh, ch uh, channel URLs. And then we'll have a finished channel where we'll notify once a URL has been pr uh, processed as an, uh, uh, we have finished processing a particular uh, URL, right? So now let's start writing our uh, crawl functions, func crawl. Now, you know, it accepts three things, right? It accepts the URL. It accepts a channel of type string. So as you uh, you might remember that we had created a channel URLs of type string. It was a channel of type string. So this is so here we're going to pass uh, channel URLs, but it will be called CH for the sake of this particular function, which is the crawl function, right? And then we have our finished channel, which is of type Boolean. As you can see here, we had created this created channel of type Boolean channel of type boolean all right and now in our uh, inside our crawl function here we'll write the first thing that we need to do is we need to take this url that we receive here and we want to make a request to it right we'll make a get request to it and we'll get some response the response will be in html right so the we'll take a response variable we'll take error and then we'll make that request that i'm talking about we'll use the http package for that and we'll make the re get request to the url and we'll receive that back in response so we'll either re receive a response or we'll receive an error and and now i want to write a function that will be called at the end of when this function is about to end so defer basically is the keyword that you use if you want a function to run at the end of a particular function right almost uh, like towards the end of the call stack so defer func and i want to basically published published to the finished uh, to the finished uh, channel true that yes we have stopped uh, you know we're done with processing this particular url so at the end of this function when this function has stopped processing uh, this function will run which is a defer function in the sense it runs at the end of that function just before uh, you know the call stack is over and we publish true to this channel all right so as you remember ch finished is our notification channel where all of our go routines publish uh, true whenever they have stopped publish uh, st uh, stopped processing a particular uh, url all right so i hope uh, everything is clear till now now at the end of the function it's a self calling function so you have to uh, it's almost like a iffy if you have uh, used uh, uh, JavaScript so you know immediately invoked function expressions iffy so this is very similar to that uh, you have to you know close uh, this basically self calling function and then uh, we'll check for the error that I just uh, we may have received an error here so let's check for that error right so error is not equal to nil so if the error is there that means you'll print out error fail to crawl all right comma URL and then you'll just return from this place now the response that I've received, I want to take that in a variable called b. So it'll be called response.body. Okay, I'll receive something in the body of the response. And at the end of this, uh, you know, when this function stops co uh, processing, I want to close the body as well, right? So this is uh, capital C. Now. Now, if you remember, uh, when I talked about the package in the first video of the series, I talked about this package, right? Uh, HTML, the net slash HTML package. This allows us to, um, you know, divide the page into small uh, tokens, 
right? Any HTML page into small tokens, right? That's what it allows us to. So that means what we're going to do is we're going to say Z HTML. So this is the HTML package from here. I think there's an R missing in here. Yeah. So this is the HTML package from there, and we're going to say new token tokenizer, and we're going to pass B, which is the body that we just received in that. So now it will take B and we'll divide that into small uh, HTML tokens. And now we will be able to start processing that those tokens that we receive. Okay, so we'll use a for loop to start processing all those tokens. And we'll say TT is equal to Z dot next. So with the help of next function, we are able to iterate or go to the next token. So, you know, uh, uh, the body that we'll receive, will have a lot of data, right? It'll have a lot of HTML tags. And that means when we convert those those into uh, tokens, we'll have a lot of tokens. So we, we need a way to go over all those tokens one by one. All right. So this is why we're using uh, the z.nxt function. Now we'll have a switch uh, statement here. So one case could be I'd shown you in the in the diagram if you remember that we have two types of tokens, right? Error tokens or start tag tokens. So one uh, thing could be it is a error token. Error token means that uh, the document has stopped processing. So we'll say return. If the document has stopped processing, uh, it's the end of the document, then we'll just return from that, okay? And if uh, there's the case is equal to is equal to start tag token, right? So start tags are basically tags like uh like for example the a tag right there could be a tag or h1 tag any tag that is starting is a start tag token so if it's a start tag token what we'll do is we'll take that value into a variable called t okay so z dot token we'll take that into t all right and then what we'll do is we'll check if this t uh, is an anchor tag Anchor tag basically is the A tag, right? This, which is what, what we want. We want all the unique links in this URL. So we're going to check if it's an anchor tag, and we're going to say t dot data is equal to is equal to A, right? So if it is, so this is a small function that we're creating. It's called the is anchor function. So it checks if uh, t data is equal to is equal to A. So then is anchor will basically become true, right? If t data is equal to is equal to A, then uh, is anchor will become true, and then if is anchor is not true then we'll just continue so sorry if i said i think i said uh, is anchor is a function it's not a function it's just uh, a variable that becomes true if uh, these two values are equal right uh, anyhow so the if uh, if it's not uh, an anchor then you just continue but if it is an anchor if it is an anchor then Then you call a function called get href, which is where you want the link, and we'll pass t to it. So t is the token itself, the tag, right? And we'll pass it to this function get href. We'll write that function also right now. This get href function uh, that we'll write right now will return two things. It'll return something called OK and something called a URL. There'll be a URL as well, right? So if it's not OK, then we'll continue. And if uh, you know we have received the URL, then we'll do something, right? So that's the next part we have to write. So if you've received the URL, then we'll check if the URL starts with HTTP, right? If it starts with HTTP, then obviously it is a URL, right? So we'll say as proto equal to strings dot index URL comma HTTP. This will help us to check if uh, the URL starts with HTTP is equal to is equal to zero. So if as proto we'll publish to this channel the URL itself. Okay, so our channel, the first channel, the ch channel, which is the uh, in our main function, it is the ch URL channel. In this channel, we have to publish, as you remember, the URLs that we are finding, the unique URLs that we're finding on each, every single page, right? And that's what we're doing here. So if, if it has HTTP, then you publish it to the channel directly.
Okay, now we have to write the href get href function. So let's write that. So in the func get href, we take only one thing. We take the HTML token, which is T, right? HTML dot token. Let me show it to you again so that uh, you understand what I'm saying. So in this get href, uh, we take an HTML token, right? T. We pass T here. That's why we're taking T here. But it returns two different things. It returns OK, which is a Boolean, and href, which is a string. So again, let me show you what was happening here. It returns two things. One is OK, which is a Boolean, and URL, which is the string, which is the URL itself, right, which we want. So those are two things it returns. Now, what we'll do is we'll range over attributes found in that token. If the key is href, then href is equal to a dot val where v is capital and ok equal to true. All right. So if it is an href, then we pass it back right, to the URL. So now the URL is there and OK becomes true. But if it OK was not true, then it would have continued. And if it OK is true, then you know it goes to the step which you have already seen where we check if uh, the URL has HTTP or not. All right. And I think at the end of this function, we have to write return, which I forgot. All right. So that that is i think uh, it with the function now let's head over to our um, uh, powershell or our in this case our ubuntu console terminal and uh, let's try running this program and i'm pretty sure we'll have some errors right uh, so let me try and switch to the uh, terminal i hope you can see my terminal right now and what we're going to do is we're going to try and run this program go run main.go and it says it doesn't have the module required which is uh, net slash html so to do that we'll just say go get it's given as the command basically so i'm just copying it basing i'm just writing the same thing right go get golang.org slash x slash net slash html it's adding that to my go mod file and now let's say main.go and now I'll I want to put the name of the uh, let's say wikipedia.com so it's giving us a lot of errors so now we'll have to go back to our code and start fixing all these errors so majorly the errors are on line 12 and line 39 so on line 12 Okay, yeah, I've missed out the is equal to sign after the colon. And on line 39, the same thing, I've missed out the is equal to sign after the colon. And uh, we may get a couple of more errors now. Let's see. Let me make this full screen so that you can see it. And let's try running this again. So it says undefined res. Res is undefined, which is on line 35. So it should have been RESP, which is the response, right? So I'm not going to edit all this, all of this part out because I want you to see that, uh, you know, errors are real as in everybody gets errors and you don't have to worry about uh, this too much. A lot of people, they uh, try to solve errors while they're writing code. I just, uh, you know, write the code and then I get a lot of errors in the end and then I solve them, which is, I think uh, it works in my case. Uh, maybe you may have a different way of uh, approaching errors completely fine. All right, so now we're running wikipedia.com and now it's found eight unique URLs on Wikipedia. So our code is working perfectly fine. And now I want to try passing multiple links here with medium.com. So it found 28 unique URLs, all of these unique URLs found on both of these sites. So uh, it takes these sites one by one, right? Uh, in, it takes these sites into the seed URLs first, that variable, and then in, it takes them one by one and passes them using a go routine to go crawl function. And the go crawl function then 
does all this you know <laughs> so now it i think now everything makes sense to you probably so here we've printed out the number of unique urls with the found urls length and these are the actual urls with that you know the dash in the beginning so that was the whole program and everything works perfectly fine uh, we've solved the errors right uh, and i'm pretty sure you, you also fa face some errors maybe you're able to solve them maybe you're not able to solve them if you're not if you are having any more difficulties you can post them in the comments below and i'll try to help you out uh, and um, do say subscribe to this channel and thanks a lot for watching